gonna suck. Hey, it's Colin Folk. Welcome to the 2019 Three Hammer Challenge video. Uh, why did I do it again? Are you that bored? No, I'm not that bored. Uh, it was great for me last year. Um, I, I guess I did enjoy the process and I thought, uh, let's do it again. Uh, plus you guys seem to really enjoy watching me suffer through the process. So here we are, 2019 Three Hammer Challenge. So it's the first International Handpan Day uh, on October 13th, celebrating the 20 year anniversary since the invention of the instrument. And I chose to use the Three Hammer Challenge as my way to celebrate it. I also asked you guys to take a vote on what scale I should make this year. And that's the list of the scales and the percentages. And the number one scale that you guys picked was uh, what we call a D Celtic or a D Amara or even a dominant seventh is what we called it back in the day. Um, but in general, the highest votes went to mostly minor scales, then harmonic minor scales like the hijaz variations, and then the major scales didn't seem to be kind of quite as popular. Um, for a minute there though, there was a different scale that was in the lead which ended up getting second place and I didn't make mention of it, but it is the scale that the late Dante Bucci used to play. Um, I was kind of excited and nervous about potentially making a scale, but Celtic won out at the end uh, with one vote. Uh, but I thought it'd be worth sharing a little bit of Dante on that scale. more of Dante's music I'll put a link in the bio uh, here are two pictures of when Dante came out and he stayed with me for a week and we spent some time making some stuff in my workshop uh, this would have been uh, probably September of 2013 so right about nine months into my journey of learning to make uh, so first things first I'm gonna make some templates for the D Celtic uh, I, I didn't come into the world of hand pen making with any kind of knowledge or experience uh, with CAD so this is how I used to make templates so I thought it'd be appropriate to I'd both do it this way to keep it really simple, but also to uh, show you a simple way to make templates. So we're in Microsoft Paint here. Um, I have it in the metric system because that's just how I do things. And so I, I drew a rectangle that's going to be the size of the total note. And then I drew the corners and then the long and short axis. And then I'm going to do the ellipse. There it is. So that's the size and dimensions of what my note's going to be. And this is a D4. And so I'm going to go ahead and label it as a D4. Uh, you can see on the right hand side of the screen there is a spreadsheet that's kind of uh, going uh, scrolling through and that's just um, kind of the dimensions of all the notes that I, I was going to do for this scale. So this is a D4 and I've got my dimensions in and the last thing I do is I have to make draw in the uh, dimple size. Uh, and let's see, there, there we go. Um, so I make it the right dimensions and then I'll center it and so I did this for all the notes and printed them out on paper and then I cut them out and there's my templates. Um, like last year, I'm gonna use the same uh, dimples and pipes that I used previously for the first 50 instruments. And uh, I have already kind of picked the sizes. I think I went a little bit off last year's video because um, that seemed to work well. So although the different notes, I can kind of still pick and choose which uh, dimples go for which note. So. Um, all right, so maybe I bent the rules a little bit and I used my CNC machine um, to draw out the circles. I already had this program in there and I already had the size of the uh, tuning ring and I'll be a little cheekier and have it draw the logo. Uh, you know, so I could have done that by hand, but I chose to use the machine. Uh, same hammers as last time. Uh, the two mallets from Jimmy's House of Hammer, link in my bio. Uh, and then the uh, 19 ounce ball peen. So I am gonna cut out the blank. I'm being very careful to leave enough length to get clamped inside of the ring so I don't have the disaster that I did last year. Uh, I use the tie downs to attach the ring to the barrel and then I just start hammering. You'll notice I stop a couple times to tighten the bolts. Uh, I realized about a week later that's probably how I pulled a muscle in my ribs. <laughs> Was from cranking down on those but again I'd, I'd rather have a sore rib than have to sink this shell twice like I did last year so um, 
Yeah, and then we just get busy syncing. So slowly kind of running down through those concentric circles. Uh, I think I just did a depth check there with that piece of cardboard. I think I was at three and a half inches. I'm shooting for four and seven eighths, give or take. Um, and so I still have a ways to go. Um, that's probably about 12 centimeters. Um, and uh, I also just remember that last year I got a horrendous blister on my thumb and I could start started to feel it already this year. So I went ahead and taped my thumb up and that saved it. Um, did another depth check, I think I was at four and a quarter. Um, and now I'm kind of into the smoothing part. Uh, I added tape to the hammerhead to kind of make smoothing a little easier. Uh, the head of that hammer is a little bit marred up from last year's project. So um, I think I just, that was a sanity break there. I took a moment. Uh, I think I was also getting dizzy from walking around in circles so much. Uh, but yeah, we're getting a little closer to depth. And again, making sure it's as smooth as possible. And looks like, here we go, we're done. All right, so now it's time to uh, lay out the templates. Uh, this is a scale I'm, I'm very familiar with, so I have a pretty good idea in my head how I want the templates to be. And so I'm gonna lay them out kind of rough here. Um, usually I use magnetic templates, but again, for this project, I'm just keeping it really simple. So I have little magnets that I am sticking to the shell uh, to kind of get them in place. And once I do that, I kind of slowly arrange them keeping an eye on like what the angle is, which way they're pointing, uh, how far they are from the edge of the shell, and then of course how far they are from each other, keeping the distance um, as even as possible. Uh, if this was an eight note scale where the, the spacing was a bit tighter, I'd probably measure it out, but for a seven note scale, and the essence of this project, uh, I'm just gonna eyeball it. All right, I'm going to trace the templates on here. I can tell you right now I'm going to do a marginal job, but it uh, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I just need the general shape and location. Um, what is important is I'm going to mark the long and short axis so that I then know where the center of the note is and kind of the orientation of the dimples. And here we are doing those crosshairs, long and short axis. Again, this is going to uh, give me the orientation of the note and it'll give me the location of the dimple on the other side. Uh, by doing this, I'm center punching. So from the other side of the shell, I'll be able to see the exact location of the dimple. So when I start hammering, I know where to hammer. And now we're going to polish the shell. Uh, much easier to polish it when it's still a whole shell versus when I have dimples or notes in. So I'm going to get it nice and clean right now. That's a, a steel wire brush. All right, first dimple, I'm gonna hot glue it on. I use Stanley hot glue, it seems to work really well with uh, metal and uh, it keeps the dimples on there pretty well. So I have it placed in a vise. You can see that little mark, that center punch. And uh, now I remember this from last year, is that uh, for the dimples, I ended up using a hammer on hammer technique. So this is the side of the mallet and then my ball peen hammer. And this allows me to kind of gradually find the edge of the dimple whilst keeping things pretty smooth. And once I get the edge in there, I'll kind of start hammering by hand to kind of bring it down to depth a little easier. And then I'll come back with the hammer on hammer and I will promptly hit my hand. Uh, <laughs> and then I say, screw that, that hurt. Uh, I'll just go ahead and finish this thing by hand. Oh, I think I decided to do it again. And I think I hit my hand again. And then I really decide there it is. Uh, I really decided I'm just going to finish this by hand. I don't hit my hand anymore. And so I continued on like that for the rest of the dimples. There we go. Um, I forgot to press record for the center dome, but the dome is in, but I'm going to go ahead and double it. And so here I'm eyeballing the center. I look from one side, squint from the other. And I, at this point, think I have it right. I can tell you I absolutely did not have it right. It was slightly off center. Um, again, it'll still be functional, but uh, I probably should have looked it from above. I think that would have been the indicator that it was a little bit off center. But uh, the guy hot gluing right there, he's pretty sure he's got it just perfect. <laughs> and I hammered it and a little off center, but good enough. So when I cut the flange, I have a ring. That is the, the ID is of the shell size and the OD is of my desired flange size. And so I um, just clamp it with the shell and then I score the edge 
an OD to scribe in where the edge of the fan will be. And so you can't see it, but that's what I'm cutting along and following that um, that flame to scribe. And, uh, it's, it's still a tough task to do with the shears to make a turn like that, but uh, it is doable. Alright, so it's in the tuning rings, and I'm going to start shaping. Uh, my general approach with this, this is different than how I do my normal instruments, how I make the ether, but I'm going to go ahead and bubble these up um, and kind of force in that general shape of the membrane. And I'm going to do that for all the notes. And I'll do the center note a little bit differently. If it was an any, I would do it the same, but because it's an Audi, I'm going to take a slightly different approach. But uh, go ahead and bubble all those up. And I, I kind of peek from one side to the other to make sure I'm still in the template. And this is what I was talking about, the, the center note, I'm going to do a little different. I'm hammering in a light border here, and the, the goal is to kind of crease the metal so that when I bubble it up from the playing side, it'll have a, like, almost like a hinge where it can then kind of bubble in on. Um, otherwise, you can just drag in way too much metal or get big ripples. Or So this is kind of the approach I thought of to crease in that general border and to kind of get the entire center note membrane to bubble in and kind of buckle all as one. Um, and because I'm limited on hammer size here, my mallet can't get up in next to the dimple. And so I'm using the hammer on hammer here to push the dome down and get that general bubble shape. Um, and it actually worked really well. I was, I was quite pleased that it, it all kind of came as one big membrane and, and didn't have any kind of funny ripples in it. That was one problem I had with the center of last year was that um, near the edge of the big dome, there was kind of a metal ripple that I just couldn't get rid of. Um, and it just didn't want to move with the rest of the membrane. So I was able to avoid that this year. Now the general approach is to kind of just crease up the border, clean it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna bubble everything down uh, on the border and then bubble it up and bubble it down a few times and start creating some tension in the notes. And again, this is before I have burned the shell, so this is all just kind of prep work and shaping work. So at this point I'm pretty content with how the other notes are looking. I'm going to give the center note a little extra attention, um, mainly because I want to make sure that it can be it is supported by the kind of geometry and the, how I've shaped the interstitial, that it can be um, strong enough to be able to hold the note. And I also want to kind of check the shoulder tone at this point. So I'm going to kind of lightly bubble it down and start rough tuning it. Uh, it came in pretty easy. Just kind of moving it around, making sure it's there. It's not stable, but um, it's enough of an indicator that uh, it can be healthy. And uh, kind of checking the shoulders. And now we go into the kiln. Um, so I used the kiln this year, and there's a specific reason. Uh, where I live, uh, we had some really bad fires about two years ago. And when I was filming this video, it was kind of back in fire season. And I, even as I'm talking to you right now, half the town doesn't have power because they're being extra safe. So it felt a little irresponsible to pull out the giant weed torch. So I went ahead and um, used the kiln and I'm gonna put it in there for a run of uh, 400 degrees Celsius for two hours. And we'll come check it in the morning. So here it is out of the kiln and ready to be tuned. And here the shoulders are kind of in there. Okay, now some rough tuning.
So I'm using the hand torch here to challenge the stability of my notes. Um, I did this four or five times. So it would tune, heat, tune, heat, tune, heat, uh, until everything was stable, and then the top trail was ready. Uh, so last year I made a stencil and used a patina to uh, etch the logo onto the shell. Um, I didn't show you how I did it last year, but I thought I would this year. This is my vinyl cutter. It's an off-the-shelf Cricut. Um, and now I'm going to make a stencil. And right now, I ruined it. <laughs> I made a mistake. I picked it out as if I was going to make a sticker. And cue head hang. I realized it, so I went and had another one cut. And uh, now I'm going to weed out the what would be the sticker to leave the negatives uh, so I can then use the patina to then leave the positive on the shell. So uh, very carefully weeding it out. Um, the next step is I'm going to take some um, of the sticky back paper here and press that paper on. And you gotta rub it really hard so that when you peel it off you pick up um, everything that's there. Here we go. So I got the contact paper stuck to the vinyl, I'm peeling it off. So that backside's sticky now. It's like a sticker, or it's, a, it's to be a stencil, and I'm gonna stick it on the shell. And I did it right between the bottom two notes, so kind of in the, the standard playing position. And uh, I had to be careful with that kind of somewhat compound curve of the hand pan shell, but uh, it's small enough that it wasn't too effective. I think there was one bubble I got out, and that was it. Same thing, rub it on really hard. Now the satisfying of peeling off the contact paper to leave the stencil. And I'm gonna go ahead and tape off the edge of the stencil just so I don't make a mess. And yeah, now I have a patina and a Q-tip. And you just Q-tip on the patina until you get a nice color change. And now I'm gonna peel off the vinyl. I was trying to be careful, I didn't wanna scratch the instrument. And then I remembered, oh, if you just use um, like acetone or lacquer thinner, um, you can kind of rub it off, so I remembered that and yeah, rubbed it all the way off and left with uh, yeah, a nice little logo. And uh, my wife made that logo, so thanks to my wife. Good design. And it's time for the bottom shell. Uh, same approach. Um, I have my analog clock in the background. Um, it does end up getting stuck on itself. I think when I moved it, I bent one of the arms or the, the hands of the clock, but it does give some indicator of how long it took. Uh, I think it was again about 90 minutes. Um, there was a movie that I was going to go see at 4 o'clock so I was kind of hot to get this done and get it in the kiln before that so I, I had some encouragement. Um, same approach, just hammer it down, follow the concentric circles, try to be really even. Um, I think the, the first time in the first part of the video I, I didn't have a headphones in so uh, this one I have headphones in and I'm listening to a book, so I, I think I got into a kind of a better flow state. And it was just the second time I'd done it in a couple of days, so um, it was definitely better the second time. And same goal, I'm checking the depth, looking to get to four and seven eighths or so in, in that ballpark, in that neighborhood. And here we have it. I'm gonna mark the center, so um, you pick a length that gets you almost to center, and then you run that around kind of north, south, east, west, and you mark it on the inside of the shell. And what you end up doing is creating a little box, and then if you uh, find the center of that box, uh, you get the center of the shell. Uh, you can make an X in the box uh, by connecting the diagonals. Uh, I just kind of eyeball it. Now I'm going to drill a pilot hole. And I drill a pilot hole because when you use a hole saw like this, um, you want to be careful that the hole saw doesn't bite really hard, so having the pilot hole allows you to kind of ease your way in without getting a weird bite from the hole saw. That was a two and a quarter inch hole saw. That's a lot bigger than what I usually do, but um, I wanted to be extra safe. Uh, I couldn't imagine ruining one of these shells by making the port, so my port is a little bit shallower than my typical instrument. Now, this is the same pipe I used last year. It's beveled on the other edge. Uh, I just kind of center it by eye. And then I'm going to use the hot glue to pretty much hot glue it to death. I, I, would be, I really didn't want it to shift while I was going to have to hand hammer the port, so um, I was very liberal with the hot glue. So one thing I didn't mention is that before I sunk the shell, I had the CNC machine draw the logo on the shell. I wasn't sure if this was going to work because you have to be really careful not to smudge the, the Sharpie. I wasn't sure how it would look once I hand sunk it, but at this point I was I was hopeful that it looked pretty good. I still had to be really careful to not touch it or smudge it. 
So we're going to go ahead and hand this thing through. Uh, it didn't quite catch or crease on the uh, that pipe, the female part, as, as well as I wanted it to. But at this point, I'm committed. So I, I come over to this side to see if I can get a better bite, uh, kind of over by the H of the Three Hammer Challenge logo. Didn't bite quite as well as I wanted to. It's probably just that the shell shape was, I don't know, somewhat irregular because I did it by hand. But uh, I think I was able to kind of clean it up enough. Um, yeah, so those little sticks I take out of my pocket, those are my go no goes. Um, if this, the stick is of a certain length and if it goes through the hole, it's a go. If it doesn't, it's a no go, so I have to keep hammering. And that's just an indicator of I need that hole to be so open so that when I hammer the edge over by hand, um, it'll be right around the right diameter to finish it. And uh, that diameter is about 80, centimeter, 80 millimeters. About 8 centimeters is what I can get my hand through. So. And here I am just rolling over the edge. Um, this is kind of a laborious task, and uh, you have to be careful not to deform it or smash it. Or, uh, But uh, I was successful, so now it goes in the kiln. And I decided for this run, I decided to do it at a lower temperature because I wanted it to have kind of a really pretty blue color. So I'm going to program it. Uh, let's see, I think I did 280 degrees Celsius. Yeah, now I'm going to go see my movie. And then uh, I'm going to sneak back and check the kiln after the movie. I was really excited. I was like, oh, I hope it looks good. I hope it looks good. I hope it didn't get smudged. I hope it's nice and clean. And I got the first peek. And I was like, yes, it worked. It looks good. Same as last time, trim flange. So I was thinking with the top shell in D minor, I was probably going to do a, a D minor triad in the bottom, but then this port came in really, really, really sharp, and so I realized I maybe had the opportunity to do the relative major, which would be F major, and so it came in high enough that it was pretty easy to get the F major out of it, um, which is F5, A5, C6. I've got it in tune and I leave my fundamental of the port, the F5, um, I leave mine about 20 cents sharp uh, when I groove them, they tend to go 20 cents flat, so uh, the, the A and the C would be in tune and then the F would be intentionally uh, up about 20 cents, give or take. And if anything, I'll leave them all a little bit sharp um, and then tune them down once it's glued. All right, I have the instrument glued, clamped. And here's the first taste. Uh, last step here, oiling. Um, I also applied the rim. Um, it's, a, it's not the copper one I usually do for the ether. I decided to uh, do the silver one just to kind of honor that this is something different than the ether and the ether is hits the copper so wiping the oil off and here's a cool little trick andy style taught me to activate the helmholtz with a, a towel and i give to you the 2019 three hammer challenge
concludes the 2019 Three Hammer Challenge. Am I glad it's done? Yes. Will I do it again? I don't know. Ask me in a year, I guess. Uh, am I glad I did it? Yeah, of course I am. Uh, I, I think it's a worthwhile undertaking for someone who uh, makes these instruments to, uh, you know, once a year, abandon all the tools and just get back to the basics. Uh, I, I do believe both years I came out the other side of the Three Hammer Challenge as a better, more skillful maker. Um, both that I was reminded there were skills that I hadn't used in a while that I then remembered, and I also acquired new skills uh, both years. So um, yeah, uh, I'm glad it's done. Uh, I mostly enjoyed it this year. Uh, my arm is sore, and uh, I think that's it. So thank you for those who participated in voting for the scale, and uh, thank you all for watching. See you next time.